on Q2 a long time coming. There's an old saying that the best time to plant a tree is 50 years ago. And uh, we've let a little time uh, go by, unfortunately. A new and pricey park nearly two decades in the works could soon be heading to Billings and a terrific touchdown. Kind of puts a feather in Butte's cap too is, you know, we're, we're pretty prominent. You know, we were in the past and eh, we can still be that way. Video evidence released of a historic landing in the mining city. The MTN 430 News starts right now. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Wednesday. I'm Haley Monaco. First tonight, a closer look at what would be the largest community park investment in the city of Billings in more than 40 years. The city hopes to spend $30 million to develop Cottonwood Park, a 38 acre plot of land along 54th Street on the far west end. As our Kelsey Boggs reports, there's a renewed push to begin construction, but the project awaits a green light from city council. After the park spawn failed this past November, the city had to rework its plans for the future of Billings Parks. But out here on 54th Street West, plans for Cottonwood Park are still in the works, as long as it receives city council approval and millions of dollars in funding. That would be nice. I would really enjoy that. It's a plan more than 20 years in the making. I was told when I first purchased that they would eventually yep. uh, build a park because th that area is designated as a city park. To turn this empty space into what some have called the Pioneer Park of the West End. That's exactly what they wanted to do. Billings Mayor Bill Cole says the vision for this space first emerged back in 2002 when Don and Betsy Forbes donated this plot of land to the city of Billings. They basically said, we'll give you this multi-million dollar piece of property at no charge if you develop it and turn it in to a regular, large, multi-purpose park. Yeah. And their analogy was always Pioneer Park. They love Pioneer Park. But the plot has laid untouched for more than two decades, with Cole saying each acre is worth $100,000. There's an old saying that the best time to plant a tree is 50 years ago. And uh, we've let a little time uh, go by, unfortunately. Only two community parks have been developed within city limits over the past 40-some years. Centennial Park just a few years ago and Castle Rock Park back in 1982. We've unfortunately got out of the business of developing large regular purpose parks. That was until last year, when the parks bond was brought forth to voters. Cottonwood was initially slated to receive 20 million if it passed, but it was trimmed to just a million. But ultimately, the parks bond failed. At this point, we really do not have a funding source. Now the city is looking for private funding sources to make the Forbes' dream a reality. Exciting news for Weston residents like Edna Jensen, who welcomed the idea of an addition to their neighborhood. That would certainly increase the uh, property values around here. And we give the kids a place to do to be whatever they do in Billings Kelsey Boggs MTN News House Republicans decided to delay sending the articles of impeachment for Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas to the Senate. The formal procedure is now expected to happen at the beginning of a legislative work week for Congress. Stephanie Liebergen explains what we can expect when that happens. After House Republicans formally present the impeachment articles to the Senate, the trial work can begin. But signs point to Senate Democrats quickly dealing with the articles against Mayorkas and allowing him to stay in office. We're going to try and resolve this issue as quickly as possible. Impeachment should never be used to settle policy disagreements. The Senate has three main options for avoiding a lengthy trial, and all of them would only require a simple majority vote. A motion to dismiss, which does exactly what it sounds like and dismisses the articles entirely. A point of order that could claim the articles are unconstitutional or they violate the Senate rules. Or send the issue to committee, which could delay any action for months. Democrats have long opposed the Mayorkas impeachment effort, but Republicans in the Senate would like to see a trial move forward. I don't think it's too much to ask that we look seriously at the charges the House has brought against one of the chief architects of the Biden administration's lax border security regime. Individuals so disconnected from the reality of the situation we face that he has repeatedly, publicly asserted that the border is secure. Experts have been tracking an increase in impeachment resolutions for decades. Impeachment has always been political. It's always going to be political. That's part of 
um, the political process. J.D. Rackey from the Bipartisan Policy Center says the overuse of impeachment runs the risk of reducing accountability in government. We're noting, noticing a trend over the past 30 to 50 years of more and more impeachments. And so I think it, the average American should be concerned about the, the trends we're seeing in Congress. We'll likely have to wait until after senators are sworn in as jurors to find out which path Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and his fellow Democrats will choose. Stephanie Liebergen, Scripps News, Washington. Good news to report tonight as a missing man has been found alive. Johnny Marani, who has been missing since Friday, was located on foot by a Ravalli County deputy. He was said to be suffering from a severe mental health crisis when he left. Maroney is said to be in good health. The wind highlighted the weather for today. It'll start to taper off as we get into the evening hours, and it'll come and go a little bit as we start getting into the next few days. But overall, we're going to be focusing on warming temperatures, especially by the time we get to the weekend. Temperatures could be running 15, 20 degrees above the seasonal average. But with that, it'll be unstable enough that we will see a few rain showers. It could be talking about snow and a bit of a cool down by the time we get to the middle of next week. Of details on the forecast coming up in just a little bit. A bridge connecting twin bridges with Dillon is suddenly closed down after a recent inspection raised concerns. Now it may be a small town, but the closure is a big deal for many residents who cross the Beaverhead River each day. MTN's John Amy has the story. The Montana Department of Transportation made an emergency decision to close down this bridge coming into Twin Bridges off of Montana 41 after an engineer inspected it and determined it was too dangerous to be used by regular traffic. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty big inconvenience for a lot of people. You know, it's going to hurt the economy in town a little bit too because there's so many people that go drive through here. You know, this is a busy, busy yeah. highway through here. The Transportation Department closed the bridge that connects with Montana 41 between Twin Bridges and Dillon the afternoon of April 8th due to an unspecified bridge failure. Some residents noticed someone inspecting the bridge the day it closed. Oh, we were, I took my little girls to gymnastics in Dillon and we were going across the bridge and the guy had his level out and he uh, walked across and it looked like he gave a little head shake, like something wasn't good. The MDT reported the inspection found deterioration to the bridge's concrete pier wall, resulting in a one inch dropping of the bridge deck. Continued deterioration of the pier wall would increase the risk of collapse, according to the Transportation Department. Some residents are questioning if a mega load that was transported across the bridge, as seen in this video provided by MDT last December, may have played a part in the bridge failure. You know, maybe that weakened it, or we get, you know, a lot of ice jams in the winter. The Transportation Department website reports the bridge could remain closed until the beginning of August, which could prolong the inconvenience to this small community. Kind of wild. A lot of transportation that goes across the bridge, a lot of semis, a lot of, you know, local people that live just across the bridge are probably a little frustrated. MDT said it has funding and is evaluating options to repairing the bridge, but it has not set a timetable yet. In Twin Bridges, John Amy, MTN News. Did you know that famous aviator Charles Lindbergh once landed his legendary Spirit of St. Louis plane at the Butte Airport? Well, that fact now has video evidence. A volunteer at the Butte Silver Bow Public Archive recently dug up a film of the event. MTN's Megan Thompson is at the archives with the story. Well, Butte is often referred to as the richest hill on earth, a nod to its mining history and to the rare elements that have been pulled from the earth. But right here in Uptown Butte at the archives, a different kind of mining is taking place as a volunteer digs through hours of vintage footage to find historical gems. When I first saw it, I didn't think it was in Butte because I, I, I didn't know Lindbergh landed his plane here. 
Jim McCarthy has been volunteering at the archives for over a decade. He says lots of pictures were taken to document the famous pilot's touchdown, but video of the event is rare. For somebody from Butte to capture that on film, I thought it was really significant. I thought, you know, it, it, it's a pretty good find. Even today, on a smooth runway, Butte is notorious for being a challenging place to land. So did he nail the landing? Yeah, he actually he nailed it from what I've seen. Yep, he did a great job. Yep, and then he avoided the big crowd of like 30,000 people running up to his airplane too at the same time. We've got five of these boxes. The footage is part of the A.J. Davis collection shot by a Butte banker beginning around 1927. And aside from the Lindbergh landing, the collection captures everyday hidden gems of life in Butte from rodeos to people using snow coaches. It's pretty neat that we've got footage of that plane coming into Butte and landing here. Kind of puts a feather in Butte's cap too as, you know, we were pretty prominent. You know, we were in the past and eh, we can still be that way. In Butte, Megan Thompson, MTN News. Still ahead on the MTN 430 News on Q2, from the dirt to the booth, one Miles Community College Cowboy is excelling in more ways than one. We'll meet our Athlete of the Week in just a bit, but up next, from wind to warmth, the temperatures will soon be climbing. Ed will have the details in his full seven-day forecast right after this.